Hi everyone. Yes, I know the start of this year has been a little bit slow and just like you, I'm also waiting for excited stuff to review. But nevertheless, I still have some things that I carry every single day and I think those were one of the best purchases I've made even last year or last to last year. So let's get to it. If you follow me here or on Twitter, you know which two phones I'm carrying with me. I'm a fan of smaller phones, so my two daily drivers are iPhone 14 Pro and Pixel 6a. Even though they are not the smallest or lightest phone, they are still great at what they do while being easier to use with one hand. I've already reviewed these devices, so I'm not going to review them again, but I want to tell you the reason why these two. So I got the 14 Pro because I wanted to go with the Pro phone that has ProMotion display and I was kind of intrigued with this uh, dynamic island. To be really honest, this phone did not impress me as much and also the jump from the known Pro to Pro device was not huge. So that was kind of disappointing, including that dynamic island. The case I'm using right now on my iPhone 14 Pro is from Case XC, but before that I was using a case from Pitaka. I love the Pitaka case, but I want to try something new and this is feeling good so far. So if you're interested in this case, I'll add a discount code in the description. The phone that impressed me last year is going to be this controversial phone, Pixel 6a. And after that MKBHD video, everyone was crazy that uh, we still get 60 hertz on this price. I mean, it was still a cheaper phone, but yes, everyone wanted 90 hertz or 120 hertz. See, we have been using 60 hertz for a really long time, and for the price, I think more optimization or better software is much more important than a high refresh rate display, and that's what this device gave to me. If I have to complain about something on this phone, that is going to be the fingerprint sensor. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's far from the competition now that I cannot give it a pass and also the slow charging. So I think the charging gets slower and slower every time I charge my phone. So every time it increased to 50 to 60%, the charging gets slower. So it takes around two hours to charge this phone completely. But apart from that, I have no issues with the phone. I love the in-hand feel and it does not feel like a plastic phone. I'm not using any case on this phone and so far it held up pretty great. But if I have to repick my phones to use in this 2023, I would rather go for my iPhone 13 or maybe 13 Pro if I have to purchase something again. I don't see any value of getting this phone. And for Android, I'm gonna still pick this because the only two phones in where available in my country is going to be the Samsung S22 and this phone. So I would choose this one because of the battery life. If Asus Zenfone 9Z was here, I would have picked that phone, but that's not the case. The next tech I carry every day is going to be my smartwatch. So this is Apple Watch Ultra, and I did not even thought in my dreams that I'm going to purchase an expensive watch that is going to be a smart watch but i ended up loving this watch i already made a review about it and told like why this is my favorite tech of last year uh, so go check that video out but i really love how it looks i i like that how it pushes me and the better life is amazing on this watch compared to the recent apple watches so overall i really love this watch and somehow i feel like it is pushing me harder to work out better so like it's working out for me the band I'm using with the Apple Watch Ultra is going to be the main Alpine Green which I wear in the gym, uh, the leather band which I will link in the description box and the Pitaka Fiber. The only issue I have with the Pitaka band is going to be the locking mechanism. I accidentally clicked the side button while adjusting the watch and dropped it. The next tech on my list is going to be my TWS headphones. So I was using uh, both NC700, my overhead headphones and AirPods Pro 1. So I sold both of them to purchase the AirPods second generation. And I think they are really good. I'm really impressed with the sound and ANC has been improved a lot. The battery life has been hit and miss because of this uh, every time pinging to the phone about the battery percentage, but otherwise they are really good. Uh, I already posted a review about this, so go check that out. The next tech on my list is going to be my iPad Pro. Uh, this is M1 version 2021 and I'm using it with Magic Keyboard. So I've been using it for over two years approximately. I did not go for the M2 version because I think the upgrades were quite minimal. That's why Apple didn't even release them properly. I mean, it was a press release. And that's one of the reason I am not also upgrading my Mac. So I'm using uh, the M1 Pro 14 inch and I love this Mac. Like I seriously, this is one of the best laptop I've used ever. Uh, I love the ProMotion display on this. I know it's not very useful, but and when you're using this device alone, it's just perfect. Uh, I have the base model with 16 GB RAM and it works perfectly for me. I mean, this is not just for YouTube work. I also use it for my DevOps work. And so far, I think I can recommend this laptop to anyone. For iPad, 
there was a time I was really a fan of it when I purchased it in 2020 with the A12 Bionic. But after that, I didn't see any sort of upgrade. So if you really need an iPad with like the best tech, you can go with the Pro version. But I think the iPad Air 5th generation should be enough for you. The last thing that I carry with myself is not particularly a tech, but I really like this. So this is the Pitaka MaxF wallet. I use it with my either Pitaka MaxF case, like it works perfectly, or even with the any MaxF case, like I think it per works perfectly fine with any case. Uh, the issue I have with this is going to be like it only holds two card and uh, sometimes it gets really tight so it's really hard to take this card out and uh, also it is nfc protected i am assuming so i'm not like i can't really use it when it's in the wallet itself so i need to take those cards out so that's one problem and yeah i mean why am i using cards in this generation because in my country i cannot use apple pay so unless i'm picking up my android phone every single day i need to carry one card with me and the second card is going to be my metro card i don't usually travel by metro but it's good to have one with you so these are the tech i carry every single day with myself i'm actually really excited for the upcoming s23 series it might be able to replace my pixel 6a but for iphone i'm still going to use it for at least like iphone 15 comes out i need to use it because i use my apple watch ultra and i love this thing so yeah those are the tech i'm using if you have any question about them you can ask me in the comment box or you can just follow me on twitter i would really appreciate if you let me know what kind of things you are interested in this year my name is Rohit, I'll see you in the next one, till then. Bye.